Hi guys, look in this video, this one's going to probably be a little bit long, but uh, I've got a lot of information to cover. Now one thing that I haven't covered up until now is, the, uh, is things like changing the bolt piston on your AK rifle. Now in front of me here I've got two, two bolt carriers. I've got one out of my Wasser 10 and I've got one out of my Russian Sega. And uh, on, on the Russian Sega I'm actually going to change that piston but then on the Wasser 10 I'm, I'm just going to uh, drill it out and put a, uh, put a pin in. Uh, now a couple of things that you're going to need for this project. You might need a hammer. You're going to definitely need some drill bits. Uh, maybe a punch, and you'll just have to kind of follow through with me, and I'll I'll annotate uh, this the the actual tools that I use at the time. Now, one thing that you're definitely going to want to get is you're going to want to pick up a couple of real good drill bits. Uh, you're going to need a 764. This is going to be your starting bit, and then your eighth inch bit is going to be the actual bit that you're going to be using to drill the uh, the things out. These these carriers are really really hard, and the pistons are really hard. So go ahead and do yourself a favor and pick up cobalt drill bits. Make the job a lot easier and it'll go a lot smoother for you. Now let's go ahead and pan this camera down so that you can take a look at these. Get, get them into frame. Okay, now in front of me, this is, this is the one out of my Wasser 1063. And uh, the reason that I'm gonna be pinning this is, uh, is the Wasser, the Wasser uh, bolt carriers don't actually have pins holding the piston in. Now, one of the things that I wanted to mention: these pins are supposed, these pistons are supposed to move slightly, uh, but uh, and even these do. Uh, you, you can't see them in the video, but they do move just a little bit. Now, you'll notice in the Wasser 10, you can see right here. There's actually a hole where you can see threads through it, and then on the other side, there's nothing. Now, I, after uh, doing a little uh, research, I have come to the conclusion, from what I from what I understand. Uh, that these things were originally drilled out and then they put an American made or a USA made piston in it and then for whatever reason they drove a, a pin in one side and then and then welded it over and smoothed it over leaving this other hole. I don't know why that is. I don't know why they did it but uh, on this on this gun, on this carrier, I'm actually going to go ahead and drill through this side and knock out the other side of it. I've got a couple of uh, piston pins on order. From what I understand you can use, uh, you can actually use a nail to uh, make your pins out of, but I went ahead and, and ordered them. I had to order a, uh, a hammer spring for one of my other guns, so it was I could go ahead and order it, and it was it was only a couple of bucks a piece, so it wasn't really uh, no benefit in, in just using a nail. But uh, anyway, that's my Wasser 10, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to drill that out and uh, and, I, and apply a pin to it, and then and and brad it over and and straighten it up and everything. Now on the uh, the Sega, it's a little bit different. Now what I've done is on the Sega, this is the piston that I'm going to replace it with. Now on my Sega rifle, I'm not so concerned about the 922R compliant. I do want to make sure that the rifle has the, the, uh, the minimal amount of 922 compliant parts in there. It's going to only have a trigger set, which will give me three parts. I picked this up off of Gun Broker. This is actually a chrome-plated a uh, fully automatic gas piston for a uh, Russian AK-47. And I'm going to replace the one on my Sega with this one here. Now the Sega is a little more of a challenge to, uh, to change a piston or to, uh, to, to pin than what other, other carriers are. And let me explain that to you. The carrier, if you, anybody that's been looking for a gas piston for the, the Russian Sega, uh, if you go to Tapco, Tapco has a uh, has a piston that they've got available that actually uh, is a full length piston and also a little shorter. They have a little bushing that threads up on there, and what that's for is it's actually if you've got a if you've got a Sega, you won't need that bushing because you'll you'll want the uh, the the shorter piston. If you've got a uh, uh, a wasser, you're going to need to put the uh, the screw. You're going to need to screw the bushing up on it to make your piston a little bit longer. But uh, I, I'm going to eliminate all of that with this one here. Now, I'll show you what I'm going to end up doing. Now, you'll notice that this one doesn't actually have a hole in it, and it's not actually a rivet. What they done originally was they took, and I don't know how in the world they done it, but I'm, the only thing I can figure is this thing must have been hot, and then they actually dimpled it on both sides 
to make it look like it's riveted, but it's just dimpled into the threads. So what I'm going to have to do is drill this dimple into the threads on the piston on both sides so that I can thread that piston out. Uh, and then once I'm done with that, you'll notice that where the, uh, the holes here line up, let's see, it should line up right about there. You can see that the, the carrier itself is actually longer than it needs to be. So I'm going to end up moving up, taking off about a quarter of an inch of this carrier right, right in here in order to be able to make that piston thread down in there uh, to the proper location and into the proper uh, pin hole. Because I don't want to re-drill a pin. Uh, I don't want to re-drill a hole. So I'm going, to, I'm going to try to line it up with the existing hole on that. And I can do that when I, uh, when I remove that material. Uh, next, uh, the next clip that you'll see here will be where I'm... Uh, where I'm drilling these things out. So we'll move on to that. Okay, here we are at the drill press. Now I went ahead and I've got my, uh, this is my Sega, and uh, I've already pre drilled with the uh, 764 drill bit and drilled into the piston, actually drilled just into the threads. And uh, if you'll notice, I've got this thing chucked up in here in this, uh, in this vise, and then I've got it rested up on this block of steel. You can use a piece of wood if you, if you desire. But the main thing is you want it to be able to, uh, to, be able to move it, but you don't want it to uh, just flop around. Now, the important thing is with this is, uh, is this steel is extremely hard, and it's, uh, it's best if you go as slow as you can possibly go. Use a little bit of, uh, use a little bit of oil on it, and just go uh, real slow with it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, spray a little oil on it. We're going to just go a little slow. There we go. Now the other thing too is you want to make sure that the, uh, the drill press is at its lowest setting so that you don't go too fast with it because you even with a cobalt bit you'll you'll burn it up quick. Now I also mentioned that uh, we're not going to be drilling completely through this. All we got to do is drill into the threads so that we can thread that piston out. See just how hard that stuff is. Okay, y'all. Uh, we're back at the bench. I've got this Sega bolt carrier. I've got the holes drilled out for the pin. Uh, I, all I did was drill into the uh, piston to where I can just barely see the threads. See if you could, I don't know if you'll be able to see that on film, but you can see the threads through there, both sides. So uh, the next trick is going to be to get this piston out of this carrier, and sometimes that can be a bit of a trick. <clears throat> because what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to be able to chuck up on this piston in order to be able to uh, get it out of there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dismantle this thing with the intent that I don't want to destroy anything because I might want to be able to save this piston and use it later. Now let's go ahead and pan down here. Get you focused in on my bench vise here. Should be able to see that. Okay, now you'll notice I've got a couple of wooden, just, you know, this is just regular plywood blocks. And uh, this is, I've got it uh, marked here where I'm going to be clamping onto the piston. Now, a little word of the wise, this is something that I picked up a long time ago. If you really want to get a good solid grip on something, valve grinding compound works great. You can take, uh, if you ever taken a Phillips head screwdriver and you're trying to take out a uh, Phillips head screw and the, and the screwdriver keeps slipping out of the uh, screw, uh, you can take a little bit of uh, valve grinding compound, put a little dot of it on the end of the screw head, and then stick your screwdriver down in there and the thing will pull them screws out every time. I'll tell you another little trick that I learned. Uh, if you're going to the junkyard and uh, and you're having the same problem, but you don't have any valve grinding grease or valve grinding compound, uh, a little bit of sand, drip, drop a little bit of sand on top of that screw head, on top of that screw head, stick your screwdriver in there, and you can get some screws out just about every time. Okay. Anyway, we're going to take and put a little bit of valve grinding compound. And like I said, this is just to be able to get a a real secure hold on this piston without damaging it. 
Go ahead and sandwich that on there. See if we can get it all on there and then sandwich it in there. Tighten it up good. Alright, now with any luck, we should be able to put a couple of drops of oil down inside this uh, piston hole. And you might have to uh, rock this piston back or this uh, carrier back and forth a few times in order to be able to get it freed up. Now you can see that it's already freed up, but it's uh, it might not come off there. There we go. It looks like it's threading off there just fine. You just keep working it because you don't want that piston to turn. Oh, this one's coming off pretty easy. As you can see, that just threads out. I forgot to mention, what I'm using here as a handle is actually a 7 16 uh, deep well socket and a 3 8 extension, 3 inch, 3 inch, 3 8 extension, and you just drop it over that and it gives you a little extra leverage to be able to thread that thing out of there. Figured I'd throw that out yet, in case you're wondering what I was using there. Okay, it's coming right on off. All right. Oh, that's perfect. Come right off. There you go. And uh, that's it. Okay. Sorry about it being a little dark right here. I'm in uh, in my other room where my bench grinder and stuff is, and I've only got this one light over my head. Now, I've taken this carrier. I don't know if you can see that. I went ahead and taped off the carrier uh, and marked it where I want to remove the material, and we're, I'm going to go ahead and get on the bench grinder here and go ahead and grind that down to the proper location. Now, you want the key here is you want to make sure that you measure uh, over and over and over again before you take off any material. Now what I've done was uh, I'm going to line up with the original piston hole so I went ahead and uh, marked it where I needed to and then I uh, went ahead and put the tape line on there. I'll go ahead and with any further ado I'll go ahead and spin around here so you can see it with a bench grinder. Oops. Bear with me there for a second. That's what you get when you're doing this stuff by yourself. Don't forget your uh, trusty safety glasses. And you can, whoop, turn your light back on. And you carefully remove only the amount of material that you absolutely need to. Careful not to get it too hot. Okay, I've got this uh, bolt carrier trimmed down as you can see. I went ahead and I had to uh, taper it down just slightly because when I, when I shortened the carrier, uh, it uh, removed some of this taper and I had to taper down to the piston itself. Now I've went ahead and shortened it, I've got it to the right length and I've got it threaded, the new piston threaded up to the hole. Now the next step that I'm going to need to do is going to be to need to uh, make sure that the hole aligns properly so that we can put the pin in and we'll go ahead and do that. You're going to chuck it up into your, your drill press. Like I said, you want to use a little wooden block so you're not going to mar up the uh, finish too bad. I am going to have to... Uh, I'm going to use a roll-off disc on this to, to clean up the area that I ground on and then I'll go to my polishing wheel after I'm all finished and uh, go ahead and polish this thing up and it'll look like, uh, look like it had never been touched. Okay, don't forget your safety glasses. 
Turn this on, and all we're doing now is basically chasing the uh, chasing the hole and making sure that it uh, that the hole lines up. Don't want to line up on the other side, so. One of the other things you want to do, you don't want to just arbitrarily punch through the other side because, well, the hole could be slightly off. should be able to see through that hole like that and see that it's all lined up where it needs to be. And the next step of course is going to be to put your uh, your pin in there and brad it over. But uh, we'll move on to that step. We're back at the bench and uh, right here I went ahead and I've, these are those uh, the piston pins I was able to order. Let's see what you can see what you can look at those and see how they look. Uh, I ordered these off of akbuilder.com. They're actually one of the cheapest places I've found them. They're only about, a, I think about a buck and a half a piece. What did I pay? $1.25 a piece for them. And uh, real simple. They just drop down inside there like that and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to brad it over on, uh, on the bench vise here on my little arbor or my little, what do you call them? Little anvil. And zero in on that. Go ahead and put your go ahead and put your pin in right there. See if that'll show up. And then you just kind of, kind of brad it over. Now you'll notice that I'm kind of rolling it back and forth. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, is rolling it to where I can hit on either side of it so that I'm not uh, mushroom mushrooming it all out in the same location. Now you don't have to hit it super hard uh, because it will it'll form to itself. Next step is going to be to take and uh, put this on my bench grinder and just uh, kind of clean up that rivet head a little bit, and then I'll uh, use a rollock disc just like I did in my uh, in the, the the bolt polishing video that you've seen, and we'll go ahead and clean that up. All right, you guys ready for this? Go ahead and span down so you guys get a good look at this thing. There you go. That's it. That's the finished product. I did uh, put a little more time in uh, polishing of this, uh, make it a little more shiny than what I did before. But uh, if you look real close, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but uh, those pins ground down real nice and I was able to uh, polish them. You got to make sure that this taper is proper and uh, you know basically the bulk carrier is going to just taper down to this, uh, to this little nub right here. And uh, let me know what you guys think. I hope this video was informative. Let me know. Thank you for watching.